How's it going everyone? And welcome back to Continues to Tick. And just as I recently said, June was now among us, and summer had arrived. Well, June will now be behind us later this week. I oftentimes don't exactly know how to feel in regards to time passing as quickly as it does. At least not all the time, that is. Primarily because it makes it hard to stop sometimes and smell the roses, as they say. Considering how quickly the world appears to spin, along with sequential events that happen in our daily lives as we age. I know it's a challenge, at least for me, every day to ground myself, to think of the here and now. But the good thing is, I guess, I don't mind the challenge. But regardless, July, July will arrive this week whether we asked for it or not, whether we welcome it or not. However, I will say, although I struggle with remaining grounded, getting caught up too often in the future goals or in the mundane workflow, the mundane aspects of watching time pass. I do want it to be known though, this YouTube channel has been fun and a great grounding method to keep me focused on what I enjoy. And I can only hope that this provides some of that for you as well. Growing up a dividend portfolio is my pace of investing. It fits perfectly for my lifestyle, considering my viewpoints of time, due to seeing life as a rather long game. And instead of feeling like I need to focus so much on my financial plan all the time, hunting the next big investing opportunity, I chose dividend investing as a key pillar, specifically to allow myself more time, more time to divert into doing things I also enjoy or think of. This allows me to not always worry about my retirement or financial end goals. Because one thing that happens as we get older is that our time feels like it becomes less and less. And honestly, a big part of that is because we get busier and busier. And I guess it does become less and less. With time becoming a double-edged sword in a way, asking for time and you won't get more. Making more time in one area, and you get less in another. Well, the rather nice aspect of this all, at least for me, is knowing that I have the confidence that dividend investing will eventually assist me in buying back my time, but also seeing it as to allow me more time now, not needing to focus or worry, worry for my financial future. You see, I envision life as a long game, and the pace of dividend investing allows a lot of the finances to happen organically. However, you do need to put in the upfront work, making sure to set a solid and strong foundation. Following this, the rest tends to take care of itself, especially as time becomes a key part of the plan. And as time doesn't stop, the momentum once attained, it's quite powerful. And just in case you lost me along the way there, that's my roundabout way of explaining the compounding effect in a dividend portfolio. So all this to say, if you feel the same way or have enjoyed watching this process and look forward to more, as this journey won't be stopping anytime soon, do consider subscribing if you haven't yet already, and maybe by the great chance you may be feeling a bit generous today. Do also hit the like button, as that does help. That also, like the gains of a dividend portfolio, is the cherry on top for the work that goes to making these videos every week that I so greatly enjoy. So as we continue to leave 2020 behind us, which I wanted to by the way, I'm sure it's what a good majority if not most of us want, this comes with going deeper and deeper into a new normalcy in the world now in 2021. At least here in California, I believe it was on June 15th when they opened the entire state back to full capacity for stores and restaurants and made masks optional, at least for the vaccinated. But as you can imagine, you can't control this on an honor system, so it leads to everyone potentially having the option to wear or not wear a mask. Well, I only mention this as it's an adjustment period that feels quite strange. I still remember the moment when I decided to start wearing a mask, and my first thought was, well, once we start, it's going to be hard to not wear one. And in addition, working on the front line of COVID, you know, as a registered nurse, to now slowly trying to incorporate myself into the previous social norms, well, it just feels both strange and nice, trying to live life back to the normal prior to COVID. I will admit, however, given this new change, my girlfriend and I have tried going to dine in at restaurants more, and even went to Dave & Buster's this last Friday night, and it was popping. Do note, we are fully vaccinated and had a slight challenge deciding whether or not to wear a mask at first and it was easily the most people I've been around in a long long time and like I said it felt both strange and nice. To summarize though we eventually took our masks off once inside and had a drink by the bar surrounded by quite a bit of people and it felt normal again. If you're wondering it was about 50 50 for the mask wearers and although the nurse in me feels concerned I do feel excited and it did feel nice to be out and about like normal again feeling normal again. Now for the main topic of this week's video, I wanted to touch on what I believe to be the main key to building wealth, no matter the situation. And one of my biggest viewpoints creating this perspective in my mindset 
was simply watching my immigrant parents accomplish what they did and how they went about doing so. Living in a neighborhood now where most neighbors hold college degrees, actual career jobs, and businesses. My parents, for example, came from Mexico at not too young of an age, around the age of early 20s. They stereotypically worked in the agricultural field, picking fruit, which is a rather laborious process for those that know and the definition of backbreaking work as it can get or as work goes. And on top of this, it doesn't pay well and it's unstable as you can't work much in poor weather conditions, often not being able to go to work every day to make money. The financial story of my parents goes that they worked in these fields, both of them, so two small household incomes. They saved their money or stayed disciplined enough to preserve their income, holding until they had enough to buy a small duplex as their first home, then worked and saved more, rinsing and repeating, this time buying a slightly bigger home with renting out their previous home for additional income, then eventually buying an apartment complex, which is the key overall to their financial success. I and they would both openly agree which I may touch on in a future video. However, then again later, getting another home with the increased income now from the apartment complex rentals. Although there were multiple pieces here, such as my parents' knowledge of investing in the first place, or the readiness to jump on financial opportunities that presented themselves, I want the focal point of the story to remain on my parents, and specifically on their ability to save the money they did, preserving their money to allow them the option to invest it in the first place, which then later on with smart choices propelled them forward. It's not the first time I share my parents' journey of building wealth through real estate, investing, or my opinion on this strategy. I actually made a video about it before, which I'll link down below if you're curious. But my overall point in saying this is that it shouldn't necessarily matter how much you make, as long as you find the way to preserve the money you do have. My parents not knowing English, picking fruit in the orchards, making the minimum, were able to understand money preservation, which ultimately was the biggest deciding factor, I believe, in their financial success. It led to a solid foundation, and with that came secondary rewards. In my parents' case, for example, they had to make sacrifices in order to do this, however. One that I often mention, such as never taking vacations or going on family trips. For me, I see that as my role now, my way of giving back to them, allowing me a better opportunity or a better start, if you will, than they had. But the idea remains the same. Without money or good habits of saving money, there will be no wealth. As even if you gain the wealth through alternative means, the wealth won't stick around. Now pair money preservation with financial knowledge and the readiness for good investable opportunities when they present themselves. And here you have one of the recipes to creating wealth. In my opinion, it all starts with how much of your money can you save, not how much more can you make. Making more is a temporary fix to an endless cycle of a problem. And consider aging and health into the mix now, and it gets even more interesting. As we all become eventually limited in our ability to work for more money, regardless of choice. And as we wrap up this week's video, let's go ahead into the portfolio review for this week. So unlike the last week, where it was quite sad, and the week before that we were talking about reaching the 29k mark, but instead we, we bottomed out going backwards towards the 28k mark. This week is the opposite. But nevertheless, here we are in the Jesse's cash flow portfolio, sitting at $29,320. Currently now with a 33.84% total return, which equates to a total gain of the portfolio of $4,167, with $427 being from earned dividends and from market gain, getting $3,739. And as you can see here, starting the portfolio initially on July 21st of 2020, we've continually systematically over time grown the portfolio with weekly deposits and growth as well. And the drip is activated, so week after week, we're compounding, getting the effects of these dividends over time. But as you can see here towards the end, we see a little divot here. And if I zoom into the last month's chart, it becomes a little bit more prominent here. But over this last month, we have a 0.01% return in the portfolio, which is pretty much non-existent. It says it's an overall portfolio gain of $3.72. And if it wasn't for the earned dividends, apparently, we would be in the red. But because of these earned dividends, we have a little cushion here. And ultimately, that's what it's all about. And if we go over here to the one week mark, it was a relatively good week. The markets tended to rebound. But over the last week, here we are with a return of 2.13%, which equates to a total gain of $610.55. From earned dividends, it was $20. And from market gain alone, we made a lot of this back to get us over the 29K mark now of $589.99. And if we go down here for the past week, we can see we had a pretty good viewing here of the green lawn. 
with it looks like financials, energy, and my ETF rebounding for the biggest gainers. So interesting to see. And as we get closer to wrapping up this week's video, here we are with the activity for this past week, or AKA our dividend payouts. As you can see here on June 23rd, we got paid from the ETF, SPYD, which is a big chunk here. It's a high dividend paying ETF and it's one that I do hold in my portfolio. This is why we get such a big dividend payout and it is a big, or a decently big portion of my portfolio. So we got paid $27.78 from it this past week. Also on June 3rd, we had our $500 deposit, just like we always do. And because all of this happened on the same day, my assumption here is that this dividend payout just didn't have enough time to be incorporated into the portfolio and funnel in on this day. But we had a $5 snowball on this day here. And as you can see here on June 24th, we got paid from the other ETF that I'm holding, VIG, of $12.75. So big difference here. I believe I'm technically holding the same percentage in my portfolio of VIG and SPYD. However, SPYD is specifically a high dividend paying ETF and VIG, well, is VIG. And also here on June 24th, you can see that we had a purchase or a funnel into the portfolio of $25. So double purchase this week, but my assumption is because of this dividend payout that wasn't funneled in on the 23rd, it got funneled here on the 24th. So 25 plus 5, that's a $30 snowball action this past week. And wrapping up this week's last dividend payout is from Lockheed Martin Corps, $2.20. So that's going to be it for this week's video. As you can see, the cash balance for this upcoming week is going to be a relatively large one of $17.20. So I'm expecting and anticipating a rather big snowball action also again upcoming next week, which will be exciting to see. So if there's nothing else that you can take away from this video besides the systematic process that I've been showing over time of growing a dividend portfolio, I hope you can understand that. Money preservation is important. Taking care of what you can get, taking care of what you have, and investing it. And with that, I'll wrap up this week's video. We made it through seven days. We can make it through another seven days. And it'll be July 4th, this upcoming weekend. And we'll be in July of 2021, which is crazy. But until next week's video, I'm excited. And I'll see you guys then. And as always, take care.